Uh, I started doing this play after watching the Oprah Winfrey show. She said it was cathartic to write things down. Now, I didn't know what cathartic meant, so I had to go find a dictionary. So I'm saying in high school. I went and found a dictionary, and I started writing things down in this journal. And I was using different characters' names because if someone found it, I didn't want them to know that I had been through the things that I was talking about. I was talking about adult survivors of child abuse at the time. So in 1993 or so, I moved to Atlanta. I moved to 92, and 93 I decided to put the play up. Worked, saved money, uh, my tax returns from H&R Block, did everything I could to put this show up. And uh, I spent all my money, there was a 200 seat theater, I thought we would do all of these different shows over the weekend and 1,200 people would show up and only 30 did. So I lost everything I had, uh, my car payment, everything was tied up in it. And it was a very, very difficult time because I know I felt led to do this show about adult survivors of child abuse who had forgiven their abusers. Mm -hmm. I, I, out of the 30 people, and I knew every one of them in the room, uh, <laughs> there was somebody who said, this really touched me and I want to invest. That's how you know when God is doing something for you because he'll put you on a path and just when you think you're at the end, Somebody or someone will show up and say, hey, here, here's, here's another opportunity over here. So from about uh, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, we did this play once a year everywhere uh, in these little small towns outside of Atlanta. And they never worked. They never worked. Every time I'd go, something would happen. I'd go get a job and I'd go, you know, after I'd work on the job for a couple of weeks, I'd get a call saying, hey, Tyler, we want to try the play somewhere else. And I go to my boss and I say, listen, I, I, I need two weeks off to go do this play. He's like, man, you've just been working here two weeks. How do you think you can get two weeks off? And I go back to my desk and I sit and I pray and I was like, okay, God, I know I just got this job. I know I just did the play, it didn't work. I got another opportunity here. If this is you telling me, make it plain. What should I do? And I hear this voice say, quit. Now I'm not telling you to go quit your job. I'm telling you my story. <laughs> quit your job, send me your bill. Say, you told me to quit. No, no, that's not, how, that's not what I'm saying. So, so there I was. T stepping out on faith, leaving a job that I knew that this money was going to come in from week to week to go out and do this play because I heard the voice of God. So I remember every time I'd go out to do the show, it wouldn't work. It wasn't successful. And I'm like, God, I know you told me to do this. And when I'd pray, I'd hear nothing. That same voice that said, quit, I heard nothing, which was a very difficult time for me. Very difficult. And I remember the, the time that you're talking about it was in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I had gotten another job, because I had more job. Man, I had about 20 jobs during this time. I'd gotten another job, asked the boss, he said no, I heard the voice quit. I go out, do the show, and I'm driving there, and there's a hurricane headed toward Spartanburg. Hurricane. I'm like, now God, I know you control the wind and the, the waves, but you told me to quit, and now nobody's gonna show up. So I lost everything. Homeless, sleeping in my car, following God. When you follow God, sometimes things get tough, they get tight. But if you keep pushing just on the other side of when you think it's the darkest, something miraculous will happen that will change your life. Something will open up that will blow your mind. So it was 1998 and I, and I got an opportunity to do the show again and it was at the House of Blues. And I was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna do like my mother said. My mother who loved me dearly, loved me dearly. She, I, <laughs> we were doing a play at that Spartanburg trip and I couldn't afford to pay the credit card because she had rented a van for us. And that bill was $300. And $300 to my mother was like 30 million. I'm, let me tell you something. My mother loved me to death, sweet, wonderful woman, but she would cuss you out and beat you up and then pray for you as she taking you to the hospital. That's the kind of person she, the kind of person she was. <laughs> so we were sitting in the house and she was saying, listen, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of you doing these plays, just stop it, just stop it, I'm tired of you crying about it. And the woman loved me, loved me, loved me more than anything. She said, you know what, just give it up. Just go get your job working at the phone company. You're never gonna make it with these plays. Just go get a job at the phone company. I was sitting there in tears when she was saying it to me. She turned around and she saw me because I was sitting behind her on the sofa and the blood drained from her face. And she said, baby, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't know how important this was for you. But what I want you to understand is that I don't care how many people love you and encourage you, 
or the ones that try to tear you down or destroy you. When God has a dream for you, it is your dream. Your dream. Your dream. And there are people who love you who will think that they're saying the right things to you to try to protect you. Or there are people that have been, been, that have been in your lives and watched you grow up and they don't know what God has put down inside of you because they think they're too familiar with you. But what you have to understand is when God has something for you, you have to go for it fully. Fully. So, so that's what I did. I did the show. We go to, we, 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 I get this opportunity to do the show in 1998. It's at the House of Blues. And I walk in and I'm mad and I'm angry because all those years, those seven years of me trying to get this play up, nothing was happening. God would tell me to quit, then he'd get me out there and he'd leave me. You leave me out here by myself. God, where are you? You wouldn't even talk to me during these dark times. So I was mad. I was done. I had went to get my application at South Central Bell, like my mother said, and go to work at the phone company. I wanted some benefits to get my teeth fixed. <laughs> So there I am, so there I am, there I am, 19, 1998, get this opportunity to the House of Blues, and I walk in and they're all just, they call it folk art all over the walls. I'm from New Orleans, I said, that's voodoo, and I'm not performing here, get it off the walls. So they, they told me the next day, well, House of Blues was pulling out, so House of Blues was gone. So the name of the place would return to its original name. It was a church. It was called the Tabernacle. So I was about to perform in a place called the Tabernacle. I go and I do the show and I'm complaining all the way. I'm there putting on my makeup, getting ready to play the old man Joe and I've got attitude. I'm just mad, I'm upset. I'm like, I don't wanna do this. And I hear that voice, that one that told me to quit, say, shut up. <laughs> Let me tell you something, when God tells you shut up, you sit around and what, what, what happened? And he said, get up and look out the window. I got up and looked out of this little dusty window and there was a line around the corner trying to get in the building. And, the place sold out over and over and over again. And I said, God, where were you in all those times? He said, I was proving you to see that you would honor this, that you would do the right thing with it. Sometimes when you're not hearing from God, God is trying to see what you're gonna do in the situation that you're in. And it turned out to be an incredible moment that has taken me from that sold out house all the way until every show that we've done. It's been incredible. It's been miraculous. It's been nothing but God and I'm grateful for it.